Hello and welcome to lecture two of Math 2R03. Uh, in today's lecture, we're going to look at section 1B of the textbook, which is on vector spaces. Now, if you remember back from Math 1B03 or 2LA3, you would have been introduced to a vector space. And what we're going to do is kind of review the definition of vector space, give some examples we'll be looking at a lot in this course, and then we'll look at some of the basic properties of, of vector spaces. So that's our plan for today. Let me uh, make myself disappear here. Uh, let's see if I remember correctly. I have to do uh, this. Okay, so let's talk about uh, vector spaces. So our goal here is to kind of introduce vector spaces over either the real numbers or the complex numbers. So these are sets that we introduced last time. And briefly, what you want to think about is a vector space is a set V with two operations. So with two operations, and these operations uh, have to satisfy some special property. Okay, so that satisfy some special properties. And we'll come to that list of special properties in a couple minutes some special properties. And vector spaces are basically kind of the one of the main objects of studies in this course. Now, Rn is, you know, the set of n tuples with entries in R is something you would have looked at in uh, Math 1B03. And this is a standard example of a vector space, okay? So when you're thinking about a vector space and you want an example, think of Rn, okay? So use this uh, as an, ex uh, use this example first to develop your intuition, intuition. Hopefully I spelled that right. Okay, so that would be your first example of a vector space. So whenever you come to something new, I kind of suggest that you think about Rn. Okay, so now I talked about briefly what a vector space is. It's a set, well, that's just a collection of objects with operations. And what are these operations? Well, the two operations on a vector space are addition and scalar multiplication. So an addition on a set V is a function that assigns to each pair of elements, V and W, a new element, V plus W inside of V. So you have a way of adding two vectors together. And a scalar multiplication on a set V is a function that assigns to any lambda in F, so lambda is either a real number or a complex number, and any vector V inside of V, a new element which we say is the scalar multiple of v, so lambda times v, and gives you a new vector inside of our, uh, it gives you a new element in our set of v, okay? So having the definition of addition and scalar multiplication now allows us to define what a vector space is. So a vector space v is a set v which comes equipped with these two operations of addition and scalar multiplication, such that all of the following properties hold. When I take two elements, u and v, and I add them together, it's the same thing as if I add them in a different order. Okay, so this is just saying that the addition property commutes. So the order in which you add your vector elements don't uh, matter. We also have an associative property, which says that if you want to add three things together, the order in which you add them together doesn't matter. So you could first add the V and W and then add the U, or you could add the U and the V and then the W. So this is just saying that addition uh, is um, associative. Uh, the next property is saying that there's a special element zero inside of V, such that V plus zero is the same thing as zero plus V, that's coming from the first fact, but it just gives you back V, okay? So, the, and this is true for all elements V in my set V. So this is called the additive identity. The other property that we have with respect to the addition property is that for every 
V that I take in my sat capital V, there's another element W such that I can take V and add W and I can get back the zero vector. Okay, so this is saying that each element has an additive inverse. Additive inverse. Okay, so this is all kind of just properties one through four describing prop, uh, properties of the addition. And now we want to talk a little bit about the scalar multiplication. And for the scalar multiplication, we have that if I take any two constants inside of my field and I take B times my vector V and then I multiply it by A, that's the same thing as first multiplying A and B together and then multiplying by my vector V. If I take the element 1 and I multiply it by v, I get my vector v back. And this is true for all vectors v, or elements v. And a times the sum of two elements, u plus v, is the same as a u plus a v. Or if I decide to first add two scalars and mul uh, multiply it by an element u, it's the same thing as doing a u plus b u. Okay, so axiom seven here is telling me how these two operations interact with each other. Okay, so I, addition and scalar multiplication. Okay, now as I was saying this definition, I kind of slipped into this language already. So the elements of V are called vectors. Okay, so the, all the U's and the V's up here were vectors. Uh, we say that V is a real vector space if the coefficients or the scalar multiplication is coming from R, and we say that V is a complex vector space if uh, the constants are coming from the complex numbers. Okay, And just to kind of tie this back again to math 1B03, you would have seen this uh, definition where the scalars are all coming from R. Okay, so this is a quick recap of the definition of a vector space. I suggest that you memorize this and you know this cold. You, uh, this will come up over and over again in this course, so it's very good to know all of these properties of a vector space. So we'll pause here and in the next part we'll talk about some examples.